Okay. So a brief overview on the salts of Malaysia. They are highly vetted. The nominal orders are oxysols and unisols. Inherently, Malaysian soils have low fertility and it has low soil organic matter due to the all year long rain and uh, sunshine. And most crops are fertilizer driven for high yields. So we need to apply fertilizers to get high yields. Next slide, please. So this table here shows the nutrient demand for the largest plantation crop in the country, which is oil palm. As you can see clearly that uh, nitrogen and potassium are the high nutrient demanded for oil palm. And incidentally, they're the most expensive. So when we talk about, I don't know, when we talk about, uh, hold on. I'm sorry, uh, I'm uh, losing control. I think Dr. Christine, you can uh, control it for me. So I've given up my control. So you see, when we talk about sustainable soil management, it encompasses many aspects, but I will just talk a little bit on soils and nutrient management. There are also integrated pest management, biodiversity, product value, water and energy use, so on and so forth. Next slide, please. So these are some of our practices in the plantation, such as front stacking, where it, it reclaims the organic matter back to the soil. Next slide. EFB mulching. Next slide, please. Biomass recycling. The oil palm industry has been practicing uh, zero burn replant since the 1990s. And those who have meals, we have home and also EFB mulching. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So moving forward, I would like to just share a little bit on soil compaction. Generally, today with the lack of labor force, we have to go into mechanization. So we are, the industry adopts the use of twin tires and also flotation tires. These will reduce the impact on soils, especially if you're in the coastal area where you have heavy clay soils. Next slide. So, and uh, a lot of things has been talked about the application of fertilizers polluting the soil, such as what you can see here is eutrophication due to high fertilizer inputs and things. So I would like to share with you a little bit of our studies. Next slide, please. This is a study where we did to compare straight compound and control release fertilizers. Generally, the industry or most palm, uh, palm oil planters will like use straight simply because it's cheap and you can Varied nutrient inputs from one block to another. But compound fertilizers and control release fertilizers can give proof an alternative. So, this is a slide that shows the soil and runoff for three plots of uh, three erosion plots where you can see the figures here. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, what we like to see is we looked at the nutrient loss per ton of sediment, previous slide, where we could see. Uh, uh, Christine, I think you moved too far in front. So what we can see here is uh, generally in the erosion studies, it showed lower losses of N and P for every ton of sediment that is run off and lower losses of N and K for every 100 millimeters of runoff water. Those who are familiar with erosion studies will know that the losses of uh, nutrient are higher in the runoff water than in the sediment. So this shows some, some light into the new styles of fertilizing. We also did, next slide please. We also did a quick study on the monetary values and you can obviously, compounds showed the lower monetary value losses where control release fertilizers may not be a right choice for slopes if you're broadcasting because the granules will run down the slope. Next slide, please. So we also did on leaching losses, though there were no significant differences. In one estate where we did is Lima Blast Estate, which is a rolling terrain, where we found that the compounds have lower nutrient losses for nitrogen and also potassium. And generally compounds showed higher losses for phosphorus because simply because the phosphorus was more on a soluble form and in the streets we use phosphate rocks, which are Really, uh, very difficult to be solubilized in water. Next slide. Next slide, please. In Ulubanam Estate, 
we also studied uh, in Ulubuna previous slide, a bit too fast. The previous slide, we also studied uh, in a very clay soil in Ulubuna Estate, which is a marine clay where we saw almost similar results where nitrogen and uh, potassium were generally lower in the compound with the use of compound fertilizers. Next slide, please. So generally we could also look into fertilizer source to reduce our losses. So this is one, I would like to show you one practice where it is quite uh, not a sustainable practice. Generally, if you feel, uh, you go to fields with Ganoderma infection, generally the fields, the planters tend to mound the, the field. Yes, it will prolong the life of the oil palm, but it will actually lose your topsoil. Where do you get the soil to do the mound? It's obviously your topsoil. And if you know, and uh, the topsoil is the most fertile part of your soil profile. With that, I'll go to my last slide. Next slide. So in conclusion, I would like to end it with two questions. Can oil palm as oil palm cultivation requires high nutrient import, is organic agriculture possible? Can we be completely chemical free? Well, the answer for me is, is a no. We have to find ways to work together with organic and inorganic fertilizer inputs. So but the industry have taken various steps to move towards sustainable agriculture through the initiatives such as RSPO, MSPO, ISPO, and many more. So I would like to end as the adaptation of sustainable agriculture practice must strike a balance between people, planet, and profit. With that, thank you.